Hey folks, so in the era of modern block theme development for WordPress, the platform offers a lot for developers right out of the box. This includes robust features for the block editor that reduce the need to dive deeply into CSS like we used to. However, there's still a gap that developers need to address. While the new block editor era has carefully crafted a baseline style and embraced the intrinsic design techniques, certain elements are still lacking. For instance, we need things like media queries and perhaps some fancy CSS animation. Without these, customization becomes tricky, and sometimes we simply require some good old fashioned minor CSS fixes. In fact, in my previous video, I demonstrated a no code approach to address those minor CSS fixes directly in the block editor, and I'll leave a link in the top right of corner of this video for you to go and check that out. Now that said, there are pros and cons to this approach. If you add fixes to dynamically changing CSS classes, your adjustments might become redundant when the content changes, or could unintentionally fix something else leading to a break in the design of your website. Moreover, if you save that CSS directly to the database, it loads every time your site loads, regardless of whether your block is actually rendered on a page, applying your CSS fixes globally. And if you choose to use the custom CSS classes function through the editor, but that block is ever removed later on, the CSS ultimately becomes redundant, and this can lead to unnecessary bloat over time. So how can we avoid these pitfalls? Well. I've been contemplating this issue for a while. I've thought about how we can set up a system to add modular enhancements that fill the gap left by WordPress out of the box, especially when it comes to loading more customized CSS. So as inspired by a recent video by Brian Cords, which I'll leave a link in the description below, in this video, I'm gonna showcase a more developer-centric and robust solution using code. And the benefits of this approach include the ability to version control your code, which makes maintenance easier in the long run. Plus, when using an IDE or a code editor, obviously the syntax is going to be much more readable. And there are additional benefits as well, not just by adding that polish to your theme design, but we can also incorporate media queries and add all of those subtle animations to your CSS. And if you're interested or you're this way inclined, you can even satisfy that CSS if you choose to do so. So let's dive in and I'll show you my solution. So to cut to the chase, I've set up a PHP wrapper class that accepts an array of block references from there automatically handles WP register style and WP NQ block style functions for you. So if you're still here and you're interested to see how this works, don't forget to hit that like button. So there are two ways you could implement this as a plugin or directly in a theme. And for this example, I'm using a theme, but I'll leave a Git repo link for you to clone and you can use it either way, in a theme or a plugin. But when you implement it in a theme, the styling will only apply to the active theme, which is ideal for custom block styles specific to a particular theme's design. And that's the preferred method I'm gonna showcase here, because for me, if I'm customizing block styles, it's highly likely I want them to match my theme's look and feel. So let's walk through the setup. So in the case of a theme, you'll need to include the class in your functions.php file before you instantiate it. And I've included a sample function that you can copy straight into the functions.php file. And the function fired on the init hook creates an array of block references for the block styles that you want to add. For example, if you want a style for the core blocks like the site logo, heading, or quote blocks, simply add those to the array and place the corresponding CSS file into the extend-block-assets forward slash assets forward slash CSS folder. And let's talk about the naming convention. So it's essential to name your CSS file following the specific format, extend hyphen followed by the block name dot CSS. So for the site logo, it should be extend hyphen site hyphen logo dot CSS. And this ensures that the class can locate and apply the correct CSS file. And if you want to see what those block names are called, you can simply visit the WP includes folder, then take a look in the blocks folder and all of the core blocks are listed here. So here's what's happening inside the class. So the class takes an array of block references as a parameter, which it assigns as a private variable. And then we have a function called register underscore block underscore assets. And this loops through each block reference in the array, registering and enqueuing styles for each block. And this is where the magic happens. 
So for each block, a unique style handle is created. The class then checks for a CSS file matching the block name in the assets forward slash CSS folder. If it finds one, it registers and enqueues the style for that block. If the CSS file doesn't exist, it skips the registering of that style. So be sure to add the CSS file whenever you add a new block reference to your array. The get underscore assets underscore path function builds the full path for each CSS file appending .css to the block name and then routing it back to the appropriate directory in the theme. This function checks for the existence of the CSS file, ensuring that only valid files are registered and enqueued. And that's the core setup. And this class gives you a flexible way to manage core specific styling directly in your theme or plugin. So feel free to clone this repository and integrate it into your own projects. All right, let's see how this works. So I've got a site that I've set up here that I've recently been using for other videos. So we're going to play around with this. I'll start by heading to the back end where I want to isolate the site logo block. So I've already added the CSS file for the core site logo to my theme file, but I only want to affect the logo in a specific part of the site, which is the header. Now, if we scroll to the bottom of the page, you'll see that there's another logo in the footer, which is a site logo. So when I select it, I can see it's in the footer template. So I also have a logo in the header template. So I know that I can target just the logo in the header to customize its style. So let me show you how I'll do that. On the front end, I'll inspect the element to see the structure. So here we can see a class for WP block site logo. So as I scroll up the DOM, I'll find the header section and we get to the template part. And this will allow me to target the header, then the class specifically for the WP block template part. And finally, the class for WP block site logo. Now back in my style sheet, I'll start by typing in the selector. So I'll go with header dot WP hyphen block hyphen template part space dot WP hyphen block hyphen site hyphen logo. And this should target just the specific site logo in the header template part. So to test this out, I'll add a background color, say something obvious like red and some padding, maybe 2M just to make it stand out and so that it's obvious. When I save this, keep in mind that this style is coming from my theme folders style sheet, which is also loaded with the core CSS style sheet for the site logo, but it will only get used if I use the site logo block. So now if I refresh the site, you can see our custom CSS has been applied and the style is now active on the page. And we can confirm this by inspecting the element and seeing that the CSS is indeed coming from extend hyphen site hyphen logo dot CSS which is exactly what we want. And notice too that the footer logo remains unaffected. Now this is great, but typically you'd probably use this for responsive adjustments. So down here I have an alignment issue. And when we view the site on mobile, if we inspect the element and switch to the mobile view, you'll see that text remains aligned left as it's set in the site editor. However, typically I might want to center this on mobile. So to do this, I'll identify the class that aligns the text to the left. So I can see that that element has a class called has text align left applied to the block column. And again, I only want to affect this in the footer. So the selector will be something like footer WP block template part, followed by WP block column, followed by has text align left. But this time I want to add it inside a media query because I only want it to affect smaller devices. So back in the code, first of all, I want to duplicate the site logo CSS file and rename it to extend hyphen column.css. Then I'll add a media query and set the max width to 480 pixels, which is a standard WordPress breakpoint. So I'll modify it to only target the column block in the footer. So I'll change the class to footer WP block template part, followed by WP block column, followed by has text align left. And I'll set the declaration to text align center. Now, if I save this, nothing will happen yet because I haven't added the new column.css file to my function or the file block reference. So I'll do that in my example function and add the column block reference. Now to confirm its name, I'll check the WP includes folder, navigate to blocks and see that it is indeed labeled as core column. That means it should work if I add column to my array. So save the file, then back to the site and refresh the page. Now you'll see in the footer that the text is indeed centered on mobile. And we can confirm this by inspecting the code has text align left is now set to center and it's being applied from my extend hyphen column.css file that's coming from my theme folder. So this approach is efficient as a CSS will only load if the block is loaded or is used on the page, which improves performance and avoids any CSS bloat. And that's my approach. That's my PHP wrapper class.
So let me know in the comments if you find this useful or if you find it might be helpful in your workflow. And I'd love to hear if you've implemented it in any way. So as always, if you found this video useful, please do give it a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe if you want more content like this. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you in the next video.